Hello and welcome to Crux Investor. We caught up early today with Garrett McDonald. He's the CEO of Maritime Resources. They have been working hard on their Newfoundland uh, gold projects. And we talked through some of the deliverables that they've managed to complete last year and what they're going to be doing this year with the remaining capital. If you want our thoughts and opinion on that conversation, uh, the topics discussed today and indeed the company itself, you can find that at cruxinvestor.com forward slash club. We can also find detailed company reports. There's commentary from experts from around around the world on a variety of companies and commodities. There are training courses on there to help you with your diligence process. There are summaries of other interviews that we've done to save you some time. And of course, there's a thriving community of investors on there sharing their ideas and thoughts with each other in a nice civil manner in a safe environment. Uh, free from abuse, trolling and judgment. Wouldn't that be nice? Leave us your thoughts uh, below. We'll get back to absolutely everyone. Give us a like, that would be much appreciated. And if you want to see what we talked about today, take a look in the description. Garrett, how are you doing, sir? Very good. How are you? Not too bad. Not too bad. How was your Christmas? Uh, I was pretty quiet. Uh, you know, still good though. Always good to be home with the family, and uh, yeah, we're doing okay. Oh. It's pretty quiet over here in Canada with the uh, the lockdown, but uh, we're fine. Good, 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 good. It feels a bit late to be asking that question now. We're getting towards the end of the month. We have to come up with a new intro. That's that, that's what's going to have to happen, Garrett. Um, but it's good, good to see you again. Um, I was, uh, yeah. we, 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 when did we catch up? I think we caught up in sort of September-ish. Um, yeah. I heard the story then. So I think we we talked through business plan, strategy, team, all that kind of corporate structure type stuff. So I'll refer people to the link below if you want to kind of get into the the, the weeds of that um, across this story. So why don't you, first of all, kick off with a one minute overview for people new to the story, just so they understand what they're about to get into and I'll, I'll pick it up from there. Sure, thank you. Yeah, so Maritime Resources, we are a uh, Canadian listed, uh, gold exploration and development company, the head office in Toronto, and our primary focus is Newfoundland and Labrador, where our projects are located. Um, our main project is called Hammerdown, so it's the Hammerdown Gold Project. Hammerdown was a former producing mine back in the early 2000s. It operated with a cutoff grade of eight grams per ton in a much lower gold price environment. So we're dealing with what's left behind. We have roughly half a million ounces of measured and indicated resource of around five and a half grams and about half a million ounces of inferred resources there of around four and a half grams per ton. So we've been very busy in the last year working on a development plan for the project. We came out with a very positive PA study in March to look at a restart scenario, roughly 70,000 ounces per year, capital cost of approximately 57 million. Uh, we then followed that up with uh, a number of technical and environmental studies throughout the year. We initiated project permitting, we also went back and repurchased half of the royalty on the project. And we signed an LOI with Rambler Metals and Mining to acquire a gold circuit uh, at the end of last year at their Nugget Pond uh, metallurgical facility. So that was a busy year. And we also completed 25,000 meters of diamond drilling during uh, the COVID challenges that we had. And everybody did that safely and was uh, very successful in doing that. That information will feed into our updated resource, which then will form the, uh, the basis for the feasibility study that we're working on this year. And on top of all of that, we've had a very successful exploration program and a lot of interesting results just in the last few weeks. Um, well, Gareth, like, like, thanks for that, that summary. I think you, you kind of summarized the whole conversation in, in, in one there. But I want, to dig, I want to dig down here because I think people's perception of you, you're just one of those high grade, narrow vein companies, aren't you? Uh, not anymore. Not anymore. Uh, Hammer Down, you're right, is traditionally known as a as a high grade narrow quartz vein deposit. And Maritime, you know, as, uh, as the owner of Hammer Down, certainly associated with these high grade narrow veins. Um, you know, years ago, I was working on a project in Northern Ireland uh, called Curignal for Dalridian, and I got introduced to this one at Hammer Down uh, in Newfoundland that uh, looked exactly the same, smaller but same kind of narrow high grade veins. And I've seen that before uh, in Red Lake and Timmins where I worked with Placer Dome when I first started my career. And so we went out and looked at it and yeah, there's a lot of these narrow high grade veins are close together, they're parallel, uh, but very, you know, incredible grade, 10 to 20, 30 grams per ton or more. And then most recently, um, back in 2020, so summer of 2020, we were doing an infill program. As I mentioned, it was a 25,000 meter drill program we did last year. A lot of it was infill drilling to upgrade the resources at Orion and Hammerdown to then move into the feasibility study. 
Um, we noticed a new zone that opened up at Hammerdown first. It's called the Wisteria Zone. And it's just on the southern end of the open pit. And yeah, there's a lot of good names in Newfoundland and I like that one. It, uh, this one was a little bit different. We hit 2.9 grams over 31 meters of kind of continuous mineralization and a uh, really interesting zone on the southern, southern end of the pit outside of the resource, but still inside the open pit footprint. So in an area we thought was waste once before in this area will certainly now be converted into ore. But it was a different style of kind of felsic mineralization, different than the coarse veins we see. So that was really interesting. We did a few more holes around that and that's gonna be a nice little zone. And then later in the year, um, sort of fall of last year, we were drilling at the Orion deposit, which is about a kilometer and a half, two kilometers southwest of Hammerdown. And we hit the same thing again. It's a different zone. Um, continuous grades over uh, tens of meters. In fact, we hit, uh, as an example, 13 meters of 5.2 grams. And we trace that down from surface all the way down to about 150 meters on one section. Our last press release has some really good images of that. So that's an exciting thing. We've got more holes in the lab to come back from last year's drilling. And those will all be added into our new resource that we're working on for the feasibility study. So yeah, pretty exciting to see that different style of mineralization now showing up uh, within the mine footprint. It's, it's kind of interesting. Like people, you, when you do infill programs, it's kind of like, it's like cheap, cheap answers, right? But when you're chasing high grade vein, it, it, it it's, depends how far you step out, it just shows how confident you can be. You, so you, you did that to give you more certainty around the resource, right? But you've actually ended yeah. up with a bonus that you weren't expecting. Yeah, is that fair to and say? I think it's for uh, maybe a couple of different reasons. Infill, as you generally know, is, you know, uh, you're doing that to increase the, the confidence in the resource. Um, for us though, especially with narrow vein deposits and especially one like Hammerdown that was mined back when gold was $300 an ounce with an eight gram cutoff grade. So picture yourself back then, you probably weren't sampling for any of this stuff that didn't look like a big white chunky quartz vein with lots of pyrite. So I think sampling really played into our uh, program last year. It, I was like, I know it did because we were <laughs> sampling pretty much everything. And lo and behold, we're finding this mineralization that I think previous operators never looked for. So in the infill program, yes, we're getting the new information, but now we're seeing the benefit or the bonus, like you say, of, of sampling and seeing what's really there. So yeah, it's pretty exciting. One of your big deliverables this year is a feasibility study, right? So when, when something like this, which you weren't expecting, you didn't drill expecting to find this, does that slow things down for you? Because you're gonna, you're gonna have to reassess how you approach this or is it just business as usual? You just got a few bonus ounces. I think it's a few bonus ounces, to be honest. I don't think it's gonna slow us down at all. Uh, Hammerdown was really well understood um, anyway has a lot of drilling. It was mined for four years once before. We know a lot about that deposit. In Orion, where we're seeing these, these, uh, these new results recently, it was part of our PEA mine plan. Um, I think the ounces or the, you know, the mineralization we're looking at most recently with this uh, drilling is fairly shallow. So it's likely that it was already in the mine plan. And now I think we can just make it a little bit better. So uh, and when we start up drilling again uh, next week, we'll be focused at Orion, and hammer down in the area in between uh, as our fo key focus for the year. Okay, so talk to me about Orion again, because again, when we last spoke, it was kind of like a sideshow, right? Focus was hammer down, hammer down, hammer down, right? So yeah. you, you drilled there, you got some pretty good numbers came back from that. How does your thinking change? How, what, what does that conversation look like at the at the board when you, when you come back, when you see numbers like that? Yeah, so we uh, we approved a, a budget for, for 2021, of uh, 17,000 meters of drilling, 12,000 at Hammerdown and Orion, and 5,000 at our Whisker Valley project. And that's a whole nother project that we can talk about in a second. It's a brand new greenfield one that actually we made a discovery at last year. Uh, but in terms of Hammerdown and Orion, um, in our general whole property package, which is fairly large, 350 uh, square kilometers, it's all contiguous now. We've added some, some new properties to create one large land package. Now, we're flying a new geophysical survey um, over 
all of our property and the hammer down Orion area has been completed now. And we've noticed several uh, new and interesting conductive anomalies along the trend between the Orion and the hammer down deposit in an area that really hasn't been that well explored over the years. So all brand new things for us this year. And like I said, last year was really uh, designed to set the stage for this year. A lot of the infill work has been done and now we're able to step out and see what else is nearby. Absolutely. And you raised uh, 8.7 million bucks back in August. How much cash are you sitting on today? Uh, working capital right now is about 6 million. Right. Okay. So what you're starting to see is some interesting results. You've got multiple targets. So last year was hammered yeah. in, right? Orion's now sure. coming up with the goods. You've got uh, Whisker Valley actually looking quite interesting to you. Six million bucks isn't a lot of cash. So you're going to have to raise some money soon. I, I suspect, is that what you're building up to? We've got uh, uh, some warrants that are due in April. Right. Right. So there's 32 million uh, warrants at 15 cents in April. 14 cents there today. Yeah. So what do you do? What do we do for financing? Well, yeah. Well, I mean, a bit of an overhang is what I guess what I'm I'm saying to you. There's a bit of an overhang. So how do you treat that? What do you need to do before April? So what we're doing right now is we're getting ready to start drilling again. So we've got the drills, two drills arriving next week. Uh, We're going to focus on Hammerdown and Orion in the area in between them to test these new anomalies. Continue uh, looking at this mineralization that we've recently seen at Orion. Um, You know, those are... The things that we have to do anyway, we have to keep drilling there. Uh, we think there's a lot of potential. Um, we also have, also have to make use of the cold weather that we have in that area. It's fairly wet, so we're actually you know taking advantage of the frozen conditions right now to continue drilling. Um, at Whisker Valley, drilling will start up in the summertime, so probably around May or June, uh, with the 5,000 meter program plan there. Okay, so coming back to the I just want to stick with the warrants for a bit longer, okay? Yeah. So if they're exercised, Explain to people the difference between flow through and hard, hard money. How do you treat it? Yeah, so flow through allows you to uh, take the benefit of, uh, you know, the flow through tax benefit. You can raise money at a higher price, use that uh, to, a, uh, to your exploration program. And the hard dollars can be spent on engineering, feasibility work, uh, corporate expenses and such. So, yeah. Okay, so so if the if, if money does come in through people exercising the warrants, that's going to go just into the kitty. It's not going to go in the ground because you've already laid out your plan and your budget for this year with flow through capital, right? Yeah, warrants would be hard dollars uh, that would come into the company that would be used for further development on the on the project itself, feasibility work, test work, or sorting test work, permitting activities, and that. Oh, right. Okay. So I just wanted, we had a few questions sent in. I just want to make sure you use your words, not mine, how you, yeah. how you tackle that. And you also mag- mentioned the magic phrase there, or sort of, again, lots of questions. People get excited about it. I think it's going to change their fortunes. So you said to me last time, I don't base this project off the back of an or sorter. It's, it's a nice to have, not a need to have. Anything changed? Yeah, that's right. Uh, we're actually doing another test program uh, right now. So we've got a, a large uh, sample, about 9,000 kgs at the lab in British Columbia. Uh, we're just preparing it for the next round of ore sorting test work. And at a feasibility level uh, study, it's all about being a, you know, having a representative sample to work from. So we've been collecting samples from the different veins in the deposits, Hammerdown and Orion, um, from different elevations, uh, looking at different composites, variability composites. And you have to prepare a really good sample before you start the test work. So that's just getting going there now. And like I said, you're right, Uh, I did say that. I don't base the project on ore sorting, uh, but I think it can help us. It's the kind of mineralization that responds very well. And we've seen this before at Dalradian when I was working on that one. Uh, We've gotten similar results to the test program that we did there. Um, It's all about sampling. It's all about repeated testing and more testing, just to make sure that you're having the right assumptions to go into your study. Hammerdown, as you uh, indicated, narrow high-grade quartz veins. So the gold at Hammerdown and Orion is associated always with pyrite. It's very little visible gold that we ever see in any of our deposits. So it's associated with pyrite. The ore sorter uses x-rays to identify those particles that have pyrite. That's where the gold is. So it's very efficient at separating those particles from, from waste. 
But, yeah, can we talk test. about this? Do you mind? But, you know, because we've spoken to so many companies yep. that, you know, they, they throw all sorts around to a press release and people lose their minds. Um, but the process you're going through is, is really about understanding your ore body and then selecting the, the best ore sorting process because, you know, different, the different ore sorters for different requirements and different needs. So if you make a decision, what sort of monies are you going to need to spend um, installing a ore sorter? at your, I guess, the, the plant, which you've just done a deal with uh, Rambler on. Um, what sort of monies are we talking about eventually? Yeah, the ore sorting plan was actually built into our, our PEA capital estimate. Um, so, I mean, the total project was 57 million. We had outlined in the PEA. Uh, about a third of that would be for the ore sorting plant. And that would be based at site. And that's the whole idea that we're trying to, uh, I guess, uh, save money on haulage. It was a fairly, haul, fairly long haul to get from our project to the mill. So the less waste that you transport and then process, the better off you are. So we would crush and sort at the site. The product would go to the mill. The rejects that come off, and we've tested them, are very low grade in the range of 0.3 grams per ton. Those rejects, crushed rejects, would get then put back into the mine as backfill or placed into the open pits for long-term closure. So there'd be no sulfides remaining on surface. Okay, yeah. so, so it's a very efficient process if you can, once, once you've installed it. And um, how does your current network uh, fit into all of this assessment too? Because it all kind of works together, doesn't it? Yeah, and what we're doing at the feasibility stage is basically another round of metallurgical test work. So what we'll do is we've taken this large composite that we have here from the mine from the different veins, different uh, elevations throughout the mine plan. Um, creating these composites, we can send those through the your sorting test work and the products from that will then go through our flow sheet in the lab, simulating what the process plant can do. Um, you know, we have the advantage as well with Hammerdown of having the ore from the mine run for four years already through this process plant. So we've got a lot of good data. We're just confirming again um, that that data is correct. Uh, when we go into the feasibility study. But yeah, there's a lot of data on this project for sure. Yeah, and, and talk to me about the mill now. So you've done the deal with Rambler. So who, who uh, came out of it best? Uh, both. I would say it's a win-win deal for both companies, of course. Um, and we are, we're not closed on the deal yet, but we announced the LOI in uh, end of December last year, just before Christmas. So what it does is it, you know, there's an idle gold plant that they have. And it's a process plant that was built by Richmond a long time ago, back in the early 2000s, it was uh, designed for the Nugget Pond mine originally. And then when Nugget Pond was exhausted, they came to hammer down and mine there for four years. So since that time, in around 2012, I think was the last time that it was operated, uh, it's been sitting there idle. So it's a non-core asset for, for Rambler. And so they're looking to monetize that. And it works out for us that it's a uh, it's perfect mill for us uh, at this time. Can you talk, can you give us an indication of um, the, the terms, uh, any liabilities associated with it? I mean, what's that look like? Yeah, so the terms for the transaction uh, was a cash, cash purchase of 2.0 million US plus 500,000 shares of Maritime for the Nugget Pond Gold Plant, with access to the Tailings Pond and a number of other non-core gold properties that they have in their uh, portfolio. Are there any, say, any, any liabilities in terms of remediation and future costs, et cetera? What we would do is we would share in our cost and in our impact of the property. So based on our pro rata share of, of production at the site with respect to sustaining capital or closure costs uh, or any operating costs that the companies would share, then we would certainly uh, pay our pro rata share of that. Right. Okay. Okay. And, and, and I guess the kind of ESG component kind of falls into this uh, too, because you you talked last time to me about the need to make sure that, in fact, I think you hired someone around that right last time we spoke um, to, to come aboard and look at the kind of sustain, sustainability issues, environmental issues. Uh, did they come on board? Did they join you? Yeah, we did. We hired a new VP of Environment and Sustainability. Uh, Name's Perry Blanchard. He was previously at Kirkland Lake Gold at Detour, uh, Boise's Bay before that, and he's a local resident living in Kings oh, okay. Point, Newfoundland, five minutes away from the project. So yeah, no, it was, it was a great addition to our team and especially now that we're starting to, to permit the project. And uh, so he's he's been a great help in working with the local communities and local government, who's both of which have been very supportive 
and uh, no, it's been really good. So um, support, I mean, that's fantastic for him, 500 tried to work, I like that. Uh, I'm, I'm jealous. Yeah. Um, but with regards to um, dealing, dealing with uh, people locally, I mean, you've got to go through various kind of permits and licensing and stuff, and you do need, you need, do need the support of, of um, local First Nations, local um, people as well. Um, where are you in, in all of that in terms of helping people understand what it is that you're trying to do? Yeah, we've been pretty active last year uh, in the community. Uh, we do a lot of work with the local school, Valmont Academy. Uh, so the PDAC has a Mining Matters course that we ran through the, pro, uh, the school last year. It's a small school. I think it's uh, less than 100 students from K to 12. And, uh, you know, this we got to remember, too, this is definitely a mining community. A lot of people that live here work in mines all around Canada, eh, doing the fly in, fly out. So um, they certainly know, understand what we're up to. They remember when Hammerdown was operating uh, previously, 15 years ago. And uh, so, but, but anyway, we've been very, very active telling the story, getting people on tours and, and, uh, and presentations um, to people along the way. We want this to be really a, as a well understood project. And it really is, fairly straightforward and we want people to understand that that it's we're starting with a mine that has already been mined once before we're going to be using a sorting plant on site to reduce dilution and reduce the number of trucks that go on the road the trucks then go from the mine to the process plant without going through any communities and then once at the process plant we're using a gold plant that's already there beside a permitted tailing spot so that's our starter plan. That's what we really wanted to do when we came in here as a company to get something started using what we have available while exploring aggressively to see if we can add to what we have there. Okay. So yeah, I think it's really, really important. You know, again, we, we have people asking questions, you know, why, why did companies incur the cost of doing this? So the simple answer is if you don't, you'll never mind. Cause that's, that's true. hundred <laughs> percent. <100%. laughs> Yeah, totally. And it's the right thing to do. So, and you know, we've got a lot of, uh, we've got a ready-made workforce locally, a lot of skilled labor available. Um, and it makes a lot of sense to us to, uh, to be there. And we just opened up a new office in uh, one of the nearby communities. So we encourage people to come there and talk to us and drop off resumes. Right. So it's part of this feasibility process you're going through at the moment. Okay. One side is let's increase productivity. Obviously the, the, the yep. drilling component is giving you more answers. Great. Things like ore sort of metallurgy are helping you with productivity. But the other side of that coin is managing capital costs, de-risking the project. So what are the big ticket items there for you? Yeah, in our last, uh, we'll talk about the, the PEA study and, and the capital items that were there. So it was 57 million capital. You can kind of break it down into three different areas. There was the open pit pre-strip. There was the crushing and ore sorting planet site. And then there was the process plant uh, refurbishment. So it's a mill that's been sitting there for a while. We'd have to refurbish seals and motors and pumps and such. And we have to add in a small ball mill just on the outside of the gold plant so that the gold plant and the copper plant can operate independently. There's two, two plants there essentially. Um, with respect to capital and how we keep that under control, I think, um, uh, the drilling that we've done with the infill, all of that infill drilling that we've done, and I mentioned, you know, the Wisteria zone as an example, the 2.9 grams over 31 meters in an area we thought was waste. Okay, well that, all of a sudden, some of those tons can now be taken out of the capital uh, pre-strip uh, line item and they'll become more tons. So that's certainly one area we can look at reducing our strip ratio. Um, the sorting plant, I think that, uh, uh, I think the costs that we had in there were fairly good. I think we can probably get those down a little bit. There's some work that we can do at Nugget Pond, perhaps uh, even before we start up, just some general remediation to get the cost down ahead of time. I don't, I really don't see the capital costs going above where we were. It should be in line with what we had last time because really the scope hasn't changed that much. I think what might change though, um, we're talking about capital is sustaining capital. In the last study, sustaining capital is fairly high due to a lot of underground development. So there was the Orion deposit in particular went down to close to 500 meters below surface. Um, this time around, because we are only using measured and indicated resources for a feasibility study, a lot of those deeper ounces at Orion were inferred 
so they won't be used for this particular study. But we've replaced, I think, a lot of those ounces closer to surface with some of this recent exploration success that we've had. So what I think will happen, I think, um, I hope that the sustaining capital cost will come down, which will also bring down our all-in sustaining cost per ounce in the next round of work. Okay. Okay. Well, it's, it's, I guess that's one of those are things you, you tinker with, um, you know, every day of the week, just to work out how you optimize this thing going forward, for sure. Um, yeah. The few other things you've mentioned uh, at the outset, which were that I write down. So the project permitting application, time frame for that? Yeah. So we submitted our registration document in uh, July of last summer. Uh, we are now in what's called an environmental preview report uh, with the province. So it's an EPR process. We have to submit some additional information uh, this quarter or this spring that'll get us to a decision from the province uh, roughly you know, early summer. And then I think what'll happen, I hope, is that we're released from the environmental assessment. We will then have to go and get all of the permits that we need and construction permits to, to build. So if we fast forward to say fall uh, of, of this year, basically in line with the feasibility study to have both of those uh, completed. Right, along with a new resource. That's correct, yeah. Yeah, the new resource will feed into the feasibility study. Right, and yep. what's the number you think that needs to be to one, get you excited, and two, get the market excited? Well, you gotta remember where, what we did last year too. I think that you know infill drilling is infill. Now, and sometimes when you're infilling, you're going to, you know, you find some new veins and sometimes you, you kill some new veins or kill veins along the way. It happens. Uh, I'm. I'd be very happy if we were able to, you know, you know, convert some of the inferred over to M and I enough to go into a mine plan that looks very similar to the PA. The PA was a good result. Uh, set the stage for a nice high margin, low capital project, and that's really where we want to be again. And at these prices too, at uh, what eighteen hundred dollar gold, you know, Hammerdown looks like a fantastic project. Um, so we're very happy with that. I think that the, you know, like I said, the, the drilling should convert quite a bit of that inferred over to over to MI, and we'll see what happens. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not going to make a call on where the resource is going to end up yet. I don't know, but uh, you know, a lot of the work was infill related, so it's about conversion. It's not so much about adding to the resource right now. Okay, um, it was a just under fifty-eight thousand ounce number on a nine-year life of mine, sub a thousand bucks ASIC. It was solid, yep. right? But with these new answers you found, are you going to be able to get anywhere near the 100,000 ounce number which you are targeting? I think eventually we'll get there. I would like to get there definitely. I think that's the ultimate goal of the company is to be a 100,000 ounce a year producer. And we can do that hopefully from three or four different sources of feed. I think it's based on our success at Hammerdown getting that up and running, 60, 70,000 ounces a year. So where then does the extra 30 or 40,000 ounces a year come from? Well, it can come from several different areas. We think that uh, some of these targets that we found along the trend between Hammerdown and Orion look very interesting. One of them was called Ham or, yeah, Orion North. It's a new uh, VTEM target that we identified. And we even have a new discovery already within, within that area. We drilled a new vein system. I think it created 22 grams over 0.44 meters right on the edge of this new anomaly that sits between the Orion and Hammerdown deposits. So there could be something else happening within this corridor. There's this new zone that we uh, are drilling now at the Orion deposit, thicker, higher grades over, you know, nice widths. Um, and then there's also our Whisker Valley project, which is only a few kilometers away from Hammerdown, where we had a new discovery last year of just over five grams over uh, six meters. So I think if we can add kind of a hub and spoke idea to what we have, if we get the mill going, supply the feed from hammer down, and then grow from there at a cash flow, that's always been the idea for the company. Right. And I think. Okay. So I guess you've got a lot of new data coming through all the time. You, you're going to be able to update us as you progress. Um, question about the royalty. Why now? We were able to take advantage of the royalty buyback uh, last year. Uh, we purchased the half of the NSR on Hammerdown. So there was a 2% NSR on the Hammerdown project itself. Uh, we bought half of that back at a discount for 750,000. 
So we thought it was a good idea at the time um, and it makes sense for us to, to take that down. It gives us some flexibility into the future, obviously improves the project economics uh, for us. And uh, we've had a lot of interest in, in from other people looking at that royalty, but it's not our priority at the moment. We think we can continue going as we are, but um, yeah, it would seem like the right thing to do at a discount and sure uh, it was a good deal for us. Okay, fantastic. And then just remind me again, I, I think you may have mentioned it earlier. So you're gonna go back out to market to raise capital when? Uh, we're looking at that now, we're not sure. We have 6 million in, in working capital right now. We've got the warrants coming due in April, right? So some of those perhaps may get exercised. Um, we're not sure yet, but we hopefully are. Right, because I mean, that's the, that's the one thing about this story is just looking at the share price for the last few months, it's been flat. Okay, you're about 17 cents when we last spoke and you've been bouncing around, but 14 today. What do you think the things that are gonna get people going again are? What, what do you need to be saying and doing? Yeah, I think it's been flat for a while. Um, really, like I said, we've been in, you know, permitting, we've been in technical study mode, environmental study mode, infill drilling and doing that kind of thing. So getting the project ready for the next stage. But now, now we're starting to see these new expiration results coming out of, you know, the step out drilling that we've done. So not so much infill anymore, actually adding to the story. So I think that will change the way people look at the story from now on, as the project itself gets a little more advanced and you know, we get some more certainty on the permitting, on the feasibility work, you know, those are the big catalysts for us uh, later this year, closing the deal on the Nugget Pond Gold Circuit would be a, certainly a, a good thing for us to do. And then more drilling, more exploration results closer, you know, or close to the mine plan uh, that we have. And if we can see those ounces starting to look like they can be added into the mine plan and the economics would be that much better. So I think, yeah, last year was a lot of uh, heavy lifting to get ready for this year, but I think now we're going to see things take off from here with these new discoveries that we've made and starting to expand on them. Great. I mean, yeah, I think that's true. I mean, looking back at 2020, you had a lot of moving parts, a lot of decisions to, to make, yep. but you've moved things along. I'm interested to see what you guys can do in 2021 for sure. Uh, it's, again, it's certainly around the, around the funding and what you do with that would be interesting. And, and if your spoken hub idea can deliver those extra answers. Garrett, brilliant catch up. Thank you very much for coming on and telling, telling us about it. Looks like a bunch of stuff that we should look out for. So we'll continue to uh, watch and follow you and do pick up the phone when you've got something to say, okay? Yeah, well, thank you very much for having me. It was good to talk to you.